Suspect accused of opening fire at two farms in San Mateo County, California, expected to be arraigned today. And the gunman was taken into custody on Monday after he allegedly gunned down seven people in what appears to be a case of workplace violence. Now, this was the second mass shooting in as many days in California. On Saturday night, a gunman killed 11 people in Monterey Park, California, two tight knit Asian communities torn apart. By gun violence. 39 mass shootings in 25 days. Let those numbers sink in for just a moment, okay? So far this year, if you can see, there have been more mass shootings than any year on record. More shootings, more mass shootings than days of this year so far. Congressman Grace Men, she serves on the Gun Violence Prevention Task Force. She is joining us this morning live to discuss where exactly we go from here. Good morning, Congresswoman Meng. Thank you for coming back so soon to talk about another serious topic here. Thank you for having me. Good morning. And so, so good morning, Congresswoman. You know, the Gun Violence Prevention Task Force has its work really cut out for them, given the increase that we're seeing in mass shootings. Right? There are calls to reinstate a ban on assault weapons. This has been the conversation for over for decades, but there aren't enough votes to beat a Republican filibuster, especially when when Kevin McCarthy says he's not committed to taking up any gun laws. Right? So, what exactly, if anything, can lawmakers do? Well, this has really been such a heartbreaking few days for our country. Uh, two major shootings in the Asian American community in California. But as you said, there have been more shootings this year than there have been days uh, in this month and year so far. This is something that really, especially at this point, should not be a partisan issue anymore. Americans overwhelmingly support gun safety legislation. At some point, Kevin McCarthy has to decide, is he more concerned with the profits of the gun manufacturers or of saving lives of American people, including those that may have been saved in his home state? It is frustrating and it is a long road, especially for so many of the families of victims over the past few years to, to see uh, lack of progress being made. Um, but we have to, for the sake of protecting Americans, uh, continue to push for this legislation. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the crisis response uh, in regards to these last two shootings. In your opinion, do you think they deployed enough medical workers, uh, mental health advocates? who can understand the cultural sensitivities of these communities. We had Assemblyman Ron Kim here yesterday talking about basically how, you know, Asian Americans generally don't like to ask for help. So even if it's out there, are these people, are people in these communities going to, you know, take advantage of these opportunities? Uh, it's definitely going to be a challenge. There can be language obstacles, as you mentioned. There could be cultural obstacles. Uh, mental health uh, is a really taboo topic in so many communities, uh, but especially the Asian American communities. And so I'm really grateful to so many journalists and so many uh, community leaders uh, within and beyond the Asian American community who have reached out to families on the ground, and not just those in California, uh, but to Asian American uh, community members who may be hurting uh, throughout the country. <clears throat> Excuse me, Congressman. The group Stop AAPI Hate has logged more than 11,000 incidents against Asian Americans in the two year period between March 2020 and March 2022, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So, what lessons would you say were learned from going back to 2021, the Atlanta spa shootings, that could be applied to maybe these cases in California? Well, this is one of the reasons why I passed my hate crimes bill into law uh, in the last two years. We were hearing from so many groups, groups who have experienced discrimination uh, from the Jewish community to the LGBTQ community to the Muslim community, who said to us, we have to make sure that we are collecting enough data. Uh, many law enforcement agencies do not collect any statistics uh, in a given year, whether hate crimes and bias incidents have occurred. So we need to make sure that they're doing their part so we can try to provide more adequate solutions. It's hard to mend something that you can't measure. Mm -hmm. You know, before any of these shootings even happened, you reintroduced a bill to make Lunar New Year a federal holiday. Do you think that will take on any new urgency in the wake of these tragedies? Uh, I know that there may cha be challenges in passing that legislation, but there were also challenges many years ago when we 
tried to do this at the city level. Growing up as a kid in New York City, mm -hmm. I wanted my New Year off just like my Jewish friends had their New Year's off. Yeah. And so we were finally able to do it in the city and we'll continue to push federally. Uh, and before we let you go, Congressman, while we have you here, we do want to ask you about federal funds that you secured to make some improvements in your own district, right? So how much money are we talking about and how is it going to be distributed? What are we going to see it go towards? Well, there are two pots of money. One is the billions of dollars that Queens will receive from the bipartisan infrastructure uh, legislation. We want to make sure that that comes to Queens. Queens was disproportionately hit and impacted through storms like Hurricane Ida. We lost more New Yorkers than any other borough. Uh, and so that, on top of the new grant that uh, we recently created uh, with Senator Schumer, the $120 million grant to work with the Army Corps of Engineers to improve our infrastructure to prevent future flooding in people's homes. Mm -hmm. All right. Congresswoman Grace Meng, thank you again for joining us this morning, and a happy Lunar New Year to you. Happy New Year. Stay safe, everyone. Yeah.